Now, chaos continues at Twitter. The new owner, Elon Musk, has raised the possibility of the social media platform going bankrupt. Banks, including Morgan Stanley and Bank of America, say they'll loan him $13 billion. Equity investors like Oracle co-founder Larry Ellison and Saudi prince Al-Walid bin Talal are set to chip in $7 billion. The world's richest man, Elon Musk, has started liquidating assets to help fund his bid to buy Twitter. Elon Musk has defended his decision to sack thousands of staff at Twitter without warning. He tweeted to say that he was forced to make the cuts because Twitter was losing nearly $4 million a day. Also, as shares of Tesla dropped to two-year low, Twitter's boss Elon Musk's losses have topped $100 billion in current year alone. Hi everybody, ever since Elon Musk bought Twitter, Twitter has been making headlines all across the world. And like we saw in our previous episode, the ad revenue which makes up 90% of its revenue is slowing down because some of the biggest brands have paused their advertisement on Twitter. On top of that, the $8 strategy has failed and the employee management has been a controversy since day one. This situation got so bad that Elon even warned off bankruptcy. But you know what guys, while most of us were focused on these dramatic headlines, very few of us actually focused on the genius financial strategy of Elon Musk to acquire Twitter. This strategy is what they call the leveraged buyout strategy. And this strategy is so risky that if everything goes well, Elon will make billions. But if Twitter goes bankrupt, it's going to shake the entire American market itself. Now considering the terrible economic season right now, if anything affects America, it will affect India and the world itself. So in this episode today, let's do a deep dive and try to understand what exactly is this leveraged buyout strategy, what is so dangerous about it that it can put a dent in the American and global economy, and most importantly, as students of business, what are the study materials to help you understand this genius but super risky financial strategy better. Today's video is brought to you by our education partners Vested, which is a zero brokerage platform for US stocks, but more on this at the end of the video. So as usual, let's try to understand the concept of LBO using a story. Let's say Zulon wants to acquire a perfume company called Musky Enterprises and he has to spend $10 billion to acquire it. But the problem is that, although he is worth $300 billion, he does not have liquid money to buy the company. Why? Because $295 billion of his net worth are present in stock value. So instead of selling his stocks, he first puts $5 billion of his own money and takes out a loan of $5 billion for the remaining 50% of the acquisition. Now in the normal loan procedure when Zelon gets a loan of $5 billion, what would be the procedure? Zelon will pledge his shares worth $7 billion and take out a loan of $5 billion to buy Musky Enterprises. So tomorrow, if Zelon is not able to pay back, the bank that gave the loan will take the ownership of Zelon's shares and that way they can sell his $7 billion worth of shares and recover their $5 billion plus interest. But the catch over here is that in the leverage buyout strategy, this loan is not in the name of Zelon but in the name of Musky Enterprises. So instead of pledging his own stocks as collateral, Zelon pledges all the factories of Musky Enterprises as collateral. And this is extremely beneficial for Zelon for three specific reasons. Number one, he needs to spend less of his own money but can own the entire company. So if the company makes profits, he gets to keep all the money. Number two, in spite of borrowing $5 billion, there is no risk to Zelon. Why? Because all the risk is carried by Musky Enterprises. So tomorrow if Musky Enterprises goes bankrupt, Zelon's assets won't be frozen. Instead, Musky Enterprises assets will be sold or be used by the bank to recover their loan. So even if the company goes down, Zelon can walk away with very less trouble. And lastly, when Musky Enterprises pays the interest of the loan every year, they get tax benefits. For example, had Zelon taken out a loan in his name, if Musky Enterprises makes a profit of $1 billion, it would have to pay taxes on $1 billion. And Zelon has to pay the bank installment from the money that he receives as salary from Musky Enterprises. But if this loan is in the name of Musky Enterprises, then out of $1 billion in profits, if $200 million is to be paid to the bank as an installment, then this $200 million will be considered as an expense. So now, the profits of Musky Enterprises would only be $800 million, which means they would have to pay taxes only on $800 million and will end up saving up on taxes on $200 million. 
This is how an LBO, as in leveraged buyout strategy, is executed. And these deals are usually done by people or companies that purchase a public company to take it private. And this is what Elon did with Twitter. But the question over here is, why would someone want to be the lender in this kind of situation? Because it clearly looks like Zelon is trying to run away from the risk, isn't it? Well, the answer is very simple. It's just a high risk, high reward scheme. In this case, these lenders profit immensely because they charge very high interest payments. Sometimes these interest payments could go as high as 15 to 20 percent. And these interests sometimes get so heavy that the loan installment itself is enough to cause the bankruptcy of the company. But you know what, guys, there is another catch over here. You see, even the banks know that $5 billion of loan given to Zelon is a very, very big risk. So to minimize this risk, they come up with their own strategy. So what they do is they sell this loan in the form of bonds. So in this case, let's say the bank name is Bank of Lannister, which has issued $5 billion of loan to Zelon. Now what the Lannisters would do is they would issue a $5 billion bond with an insane rate of 10% yield. So this $5 billion bond will be split into 10 parts with each bond unit being worth $500 million. So now, smaller asset management companies like Stark Assets, Greyjoy Mutual Funds, Baratheon Assets and 7 other companies will buy these units for $500 million each. And because these bonds are super super risky, despite their attractive high interest returns, they are called junk bonds. So you see what happened? The bank is charging a 15% interest to Zelon, is giving back only 10% interest to its investors, but at the same time, it is able to enjoy a humongous profit of 5% on a $5 billion loan without actually giving out $5 billion. So now, if Muskie Enterprises goes bankrupt, what will happen? Will the Bank of Lannister fail? Not at all. Why? Because the Bank of Lannister on the whole never really shelled out its cash. So in this bankruptcy scenario, the bank would take control of Muskie Enterprises, sell the collateral and whatever is left will be passed down to the 10 fund houses that bought these bond units for $500 million. So you see, by turning a loan into a bond and then selling it to 10 different fund houses, the Bank of Lannister basically reduced its risk and divided this risk between 10 different entities. So that way, one big bank will not go bankrupt. And the point to be noted over here is that in an LBO, there is usually a ratio of 90% debt to 10% equity. So if this is very, very clear to you, let's try to understand what did Elon Musk do with Twitter in order to acquire it. And as you must have guessed it already, Muskie Enterprises acquisition is very, very similar to Twitter's acquisition. Now, if you look at how Elon Musk acquired Twitter, you will see that he put on $24 billion from his own pocket by selling Tesla stocks. He raised $7 billion through his friends Larry Ellison and the Saudi prince Alwaleed Bill Talal. And then he raised $13 billion from the banks. And out of these $13 billion, $6.5 billion was a leveraged buyout. So just like the Bank of Lannister, in this case, there are 7 banks who have given out a loan of $13 billion. So just like the Bank of Lannister took a very, very risky bet, here, these banks are taking a very, very risky bet, right? So guess what? Just like the Bank of Lannister sold the loan in the form of bonds to smaller investor firms, these banks tried to sell Elon's loan to smaller fund houses. So to oversimplify this, if one of these banks lent Elon Musk $1 billion, they converted this loan into a bond and broke it into 10 units with each unit worth $100 million. And then they promised a fixed return of $10 million. So the yield over here is 10%. This is such that these banks could charge Elon a 15% interest and then give out a 10% interest to these investors. Eventually, they can keep a 5% profit on a $1 billion loan without actually giving out $1 billion in cash. So this is fantastic, isn't it? The acquisition has been made, the risk has been divided and the banks are able to enjoy very hefty profits. Well, guess what? These scenarios are only meant for ideal market conditions. But in case of Twitter, there is a big, big problem. You see guys, the moment Elon came in and he started making all these changes, he started to make headlines all across the world. And because of these radical changes, giant advertisers like GM, Volkswagen and Audi have stopped their ads. On top of that, top level employees have left the company, the $8 plan failed and the entire company was losing $4 million every single day. So now, while the banks were selling one bond unit for $100 million with a promise of $10 million in return, after looking at the state of Twitter, the smaller investors are not willing to buy these bond units at all. So you know what? 
the banks had no other option but to decrease the cost of this bond unit. So they decreased it from $100 million to $90 million to $80 to $70 to just $60 million. But the return still has to be the same $10 million because that is how the bonds work. So now the investor who would buy this unit at $60 million would get a $10 million return which makes it an interest rate of 16.66%. So had these banks sold the units of $100 million as expected, they would have got back the entire loan amount of $1 billion. But now, since the same bond unit is being sold at just $60 million, now with this scenario, they'll be able to raise only $600 million from bonds. So this way, the banks will have to risk $400 million of their own cash for every billion dollars lent to Elon. And now there are two possibilities. Number one, if these loans are lent on a fixed interest of say 15%, then even if Elon is charged a 15% interest, the banks would be paying a 16.66% interest to the investors if they sell the bond units at $60 million. So the banks will clearly incur a loss. And the second possibility is with the floating interest rates. So in this deal, as the banks have to pay a 16.66% interest on their bond units, they would increase the interest of Twitter loans to 20%. If the bond yields touch 20%, they could increase the interest to 22, 23 to even 25%. And that means if there is more negative news about Twitter, the investors will get more skeptical. The cost of the bond units would go down. As a result, the yield by the banks to the investors will go up. And that means the banks will charge more interest to Twitter. If again, these interest rates create headlines, the cost of bond units would go down. And the fun fact is that this $100 to $60 million price drop was before Elon Musk made the mention of bankruptcy. So now you can imagine how skeptical the investors would be before buying these junk bonds. This is the state of Twitter's finance as of December 2022. So if everything goes well, Twitter will become profitable, Elon will pay back the debt, the bank will suffer minimum losses and the investors who bought this debt will make a ton of money. But if Twitter fails, it could lead to a domino effect whereby first the entire bunch of banks would suffer billions of dollars of losses, their stocks might plummet and considering the upcoming recession, if any one or two of these banks go bankrupt, it's going to be a nightmare not just for Elon Musk but also for the American economy. This is how Elon Musk leveraged buyout strategy has put not just Twitter but also a major chunk of the American financial market itself in a very very critical position. Now although there is a very very less chance that a genius like Elon Musk will fail, tomorrow some other billionaire might use the same strategy to cause an economic catastrophe in America which will eventually go on to affect the world. So as investors and students of business, it is very very important to study these strategies and the implications of these financial models. And this brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand these kind of financial models better. People, now that you know all about Twitter, if you're interested in investing in some of the best listed companies in the US stock market, you should do it through the Vested app. Vested has made our life extremely easy by offering zero platform sign-up fee, zero brokerage, zero fixed fee on US deposits and features like VES which allows you to make investments into the US stock market in the form of SIP. And all of this is done in a completely legal way. Vested gives utmost importance to the safety of your funds and security which is absolutely important in times like these. With Vested, your funds are completely safe and each brokerage account opened with Vested is insured by security Investor Protection Corporation up to $500,000. Also, you can verify your holding by logging into Dry Wealth Portal, which is a third party custodian. With Vested, you can start your investment journey with as low as $30 and buy shares worth as low as $1. Yes, you heard that right. You can buy stocks in fraction as you wish. You don't need to have a minimum balance. You can even invest through VES, which are essentially pre-built portfolios focused on particular themes, or you can create your own DIY VEST and schedule investment frequencies as you please. And one of the coolest features of Vested is that you get hassle-free tax document, which is very, very important when you file your tax returns. And lastly, to make your US investing journey even more exciting, I am sharing a link in the description and in the pinned comment, using which you can get $10 bonus to kickstart your Vested journey. Moving on, the first thing I'm attaching is this document on the leverage buyout strategy, which will help you understand the strategy in depth better. Secondly, I'm attaching a Reuters article that will help you understand the financials behind Twitter's acquisition. And lastly, I'm attaching an economic time 
Times article to help you understand the state of LPO of Twitter. So do have a look at all of them and let me know what you think. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Oh, 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 oh